Pom, number four, Lockie O'Brien. Fascinating story. Fascinating story, obviously. Drafted at picked with pick 10 in 2017. Obviously, Paddy Dow was in that draft as well. And early days, it looked pretty good. Seems to have lost confidence. Found himself in the reserves for really the last two seasons. I know we've had COVID-affected seasons. Um, 2021, he didn't really play much at all, really significantly until the end of the year. Finished nicely, relatively nicely. It was okay. Um, finds himself on the rookie list now. What What is it with, with Lockie O'Brien in 2022? Because you never want him to not work out. There's just a hope. Like, you know, they're your boys, you draft them in, 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 a, in a magical, you know, best scenario world, all these kids we draft go on to become, you know, great senior players and, you know, play in a premiership and all of that. And I guess with Lockie, it's more of a hope than what it is a, a confidence for me that he can break through. What about you? How do you feel about him? It's a tough one, isn't it? Because whatever Lockie does is heavily critical. Do you know what I mean? I think out of all the, doing this with you, I think the two biggest complaints are Plowman and O'Brien, aren't they? And, like, I think at this stage, O'Brien could probably cure COVID and someone would still have an issue. Like, he, he is in that bracket, bless him. But I think if we look at it pragmatically, I always look at Camden McIntosh. So McIntosh was recently voted by Richmond fans in an internal poll as most underrated footballer in their league. And he plays the similar position this year. He's been playing on the wing. And I think people get caught up with disposals and... You've got to remember, yeah. Carlton, for a wingman, O'Brien is at the worst club in the AFL because Carlton used their wings in the last couple of years as much as a hippo does. So the poor guy has to go looking for the ball on the ball, and that's the last place we want Lockie O'Brien inside a contest. So I think you look at the last couple of games, for me, I didn't mind them. The 17-19, he had 21 against the Saints as well, where we did actually go down the wing, and he did look quite a potent force at times. I think for me with O'Brien, it's looking at Kennedy. He was on the rookie list. Everyone had signed his papers. He wasn't going to be here in 2022. We'd get a real footballer. Now, he's in the same mold. This is literally the way he could call for O'Brien. And I think, I don't think he's as bad as people think. I think he doesn't get the continuity. He's playing in a role where the ball never comes to him anyway. And a wingman should stay on the touchline like Carl Amon who doesn't even know there is a corridor in the AFL and does his work. And I think Cal Amon, for me, is the best wingman. Will O'Brien reach that stage? Not at all. But I do think he can reach a serviceable 18 touches, use his elite engine, which is elite. He does run all yes. day, yes. keep him on the width and give us that natural width. So it's opportunities there because we've got three wingmen on the list. Yeah, there's two things about what you said that, I want to bring up one is about him being a natural wingman. And that when we saw someone like a Setterfield go to the wing or even a Matt Kennedy at times, they're inside players. So they're naturally inclined to be drawn to the ball. O'Brien, the one thing about him is he always keeps his width. He's a natural wingman. That's what he does. Um, and then the second part is about, yeah, we don't use the wings. And then it, it sort of, I was thinking about it as you were talking, look at who has coached him up until this point. Uh, yeah, I, 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 he has I, been blessed. You know, so I don't know if a, a role has really been defined for him, which has been brought in by him, by the rest of the players. And, you know, I, I just hope that now with this new coaching group, they can, they can really get the most out of him. Because the one thing about him is, I mean, he's got the attributes and he's got attributes at a very high level. And every player will have attributes at a very high level and, some of them won't be at a high level. And obviously for, for Lockie, you know, the contest work and people will bring up that he doesn't go in hard enough for, I think that's, I actually think that's bullshit because he's not meant to. It's not what his, his job is. But also when you talk about flying the flag for your teammates and when you see little spot fires emerge, go back and watch the tape. This kid's always, always in there backing in his mates for, for those, those dust ups and things like that. But I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that they find a way to utilize him and put him in a position to succeed where we're getting the ball in his hands in situations that are, you know, conducive to his strengths. I think the St. Kilda game was the template. The Where he got the ball, the way he was running, I mean, he was obviously creating space with his run, but the way he was kicking the ball that day, 
you could just see the confidence in him on that day. And we, we were in a situation there as a team where everything had almost blown up and we had no choice. We had to play together and play as a team. And lo and behold, he had his best game in, in quite some time. But like I said before, it's 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 more of a hope. I just hope we can get it done with him. And I hope for his, his sake that um, he can go through the adversity early in his career and come out of it a better player and a better person for it. Because one thing we've we've seen as Carlton supporters with our draft picks is they play early and at the end of their careers, they don't know what it's like to be dropped. They don't know what it's like to, you know, drop in form and, and have to go through these situations. So I'm hoping that whatever Lockie's going through is going to be for, for the best of Lockie. I think if you look at St. Kilda, and I think you've nailed it there, you look at St. Kilda, St. Kilda pack more players in the corridor than <clears throat> than at a wedding. Do you know what I mean? There is so many people down that middle. So I think when you look at what Lockie did that game, six score involvements, four goal assists, three relieving marks outside of defensive 50, he was a perfect wingman. Like, you do that 12 times out of 20, you're on the brink of the All-Australian team. Like, that is if they actually picked wingman because they cheat and play inside midfielders. But as a natural wingman, he can do that. That is elite. That game, if you have two wingmen doing that, you win more games than you lose. Absolutely. So I think that says to me there's hope. When we used him right, and you look at how he got the ball, there was a lot of clever kicks from Walsh out to the wing so he could run onto them in space. He took the ball away from where it needed to be. And once he started to get that ball on the outside with a bit of time, he's got a hell of a peg on him as well for a little boy. He can hit that. He can kick that a mile. So, again, C. Dow, early ball entry inside 50 with Harry equals goal. Lockie can bring that all the time. So, for me, I, I back him in. I think he'll go off this year. I love it. I love it. If, if, if he can be – if we can get production from him – and not so different to Dow, where we're saying at the end of 2022, wow, Lockie, he did it. Very similar to what we're saying with Matt Kennedy now. If we can say the same thing, and the reason that we would say the same thing is if he goes out and does does it on the field. So if we can get that from him, um, we'll be a you know we'll be a better side. How much better? That remains to be seen. But the the reality is right now, natural wingmen on this list, who are they? It's, I think he's at the top of the list in terms of natural yeah. wingman. It's him you know, cultural. Cultural, maybe you can say Zach Fisher's really a wingman, but we don't, we don't really know. We'll get to him later in the series. But, you know, he's at the top of the food chain when it comes to wingman. So fingers crossed for Lockie. I hope he can do it. I really do. And I hope that we can be having a, a positive conversation about, you know, his work ethic and, and the, you know, his season ahead. So, We'll leave it there. Let us know in the comments. What are you forecasting for Lockie O'Brien? What does he need to do for you uh, to be successful and to, I guess, earn himself the next deal? Let us know in the comments.